This week, Ryan makes a Texas clock that lights up. What um? Along with an accident. Okay, so since I didn't do like a model video, I figured I'd go ahead and open up Cura and show y'all how I would print this out in my slicing engine. Um, so first we'll go ahead and load these files. Looks like we want the small white, small red, light base, bottom cap, and then also the small blue base. Because I had a little mess up and when I did the base model, I made it way too big. So these are the ones we want to open. Alright. So here is my little LED light diffuser. And everything comes in uh, too small, so in order to have it scaled properly, you need to scale it to a 10% right there uh, so yeah about eight millimeters and then it's upside down right now so we'll just rotate it 180 degrees and there's the LED light diffuser it should be ready to print um, let's see so here's the absolute base uh, it also needs to be scaled to 10% makes everything kind of hard um, and it's also upside down I believe that's the only two things that come in the wrong side so we'll rotate this 180 ah so this is the blue cap here um, it's in the right orientation however it also needs to be rescaled to 10% what is this one? This one looks like the red one, so it also needs to be scaled, and it comes in orientated the right direction, so that's good. And here's the white one. Alright, so obviously I don't have a multi colored printing head so I had to print all these out individually and change the my PLA filament from this one was blue this one was blue so these two I can print out at the same time however my red and my white one they needed to be printed out separately and every time I printed a color out, I print in two of these, so I would just go over here and say multiply object and it should come in somewhere. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is, right there. Yeah. So that is the base of the star clock. Okay, we need to scale this star to 10%. If you look underneath the star, you can see the cutout for the clock mechanism and you do need to have printing support type. So on my support type, I would go touching the build plate and then I'd go into some expert settings and the support type, you could go to grids or lines on the support type. And I chose lines just to make things a little easier when it comes to removing the support type. And uh, the fill amount, I guess this is the number of lines that it will build inside the support area. So if I went to go to 20%, it would have more lines. And I figured 10% is pretty good. The distance from X to Y is 2 millimeters. Gives me a good amount of distance to get a tool in there such as a flathead screwdriver. So I can actually pry this support material out. And then the distance for the Z, I went ahead and said uh, 0.25. So since I'm printing at a layer height of 0.25, um, on the last layer it's going to skip the structure print. And then 
skip that layer and then start printing the top so it makes it to where it breaks off a little bit easier um, and if you go over here to our layer view there is my grid lines that it prints Ooh, yeah there's the grid lines of it and so at layer Ah, there we go. 36. For layer 36, it prints the beginning of the clock. So that's pretty much how to print it out. Um, so here, my print speed is 150 and my temperature is 225. However, I did change my fill density to 10% just to save a little bit of filament. I did kind of design this thing to be printed out. Um, with no fill density however since I didn't really want to waste a bunch of filament and test it out it didn't try it it should work just fine so if you do it let me know uh, yep and that's pretty much my slicing engine um, be sure to scale all my STL files to 10 so that you get the correct dimensions or you can scale them all however you want to just know that the LEDs are going to have a tough time fitting in the actual LED holes so um, for the star is the only one you'd have to worry about but if you use like a soldering iron or a heat gun you can kind of melt that material and force that LED to set in there just right so I guess you could print a smaller version of this if you wanted to really uh, take the time and and get things to fit right. So I printed out my star and the star is roughly 8 inches in diameter and because my limit switches on my 3D printer aren't set exactly correctly I had a little issue at the top here. However um, I'm going to continue to use it. My clock mechanism takes a uh, double, uh, double A battery on the back side of it. And I don't know if y'all can make out what the box looks like, but that's where I got it. I got it from a hobby store. And it fits in there pretty nice. Um, I gave it uh, roughly a 10,000 fit tolerance around it, but then again, this square wasn't completely square um, so the dimensions here are two inches and plus two hundred thousands so I went ahead and made these made this a little bit bigger um, so that I know that it would fit so apparently when you buy these clocks from a hobby store they really the particular is between the top of the thread down to the bottom of the thread which is a quarter inch and so we have like a quarter inch of, of plastic holding it down so everything fits nice. Um, now I am going to attempt to go ahead and solder the LEDs that are embedded in my star. It makes it light up. Don't judge me because this is almost a full bottle of wine right now. So I don't know if my soldering skills are up to par. So, here's my wiring all set up. Uh, I will draw a wiring diagram for y'all, but um, I know the white is drowning out the blue, so I'll go ahead and pull those out. Um, so I have two reds, two blues, and seven whites. Um, the blues and the whites take 3 volts and the red take 2 volts so I have to use um, resistors to bring down the voltage for the red so that everything works. Um, but yeah, there is my working diagram for my LEDs. Okay, so here is my LED circuit. I have my battery. We'll call this side positive, side negative. And my positive goes down to my switch and then runs down to uh, pretty much a junction to where I have my 
white LEDs and those white LEDs go up to the negative side and then also branches off and goes to my two blue LEDs and here it runs off and goes to my red LEDs but I have to have resistors here to drop down because the blue LEDs take 3 volts and the white LEDs take 3 volts and my power supply is two, a, two AA batteries which is a 3 volt power supply however my red LEDs down here they take 2 volts so I needed to step down the voltage and I only have uh, 200 million ohm resistors so I put five of them in parallel and the reason why I put five of them in parallel is so that I can bring that 200 million ohms down to a resistance of 40 million ohms so it takes down quite a bit uh, that way I could get the voltage dropped down to two volts so one volt is consumed at the resistors and then two volts are consumed at the red LEDs and everything balanced out so that's how my circuit is set up so the power leaves the batteries the batteries are set up in series so I get three volts and it goes across our, my switch here here's my switch and it comes down and it branches off into three spots it goes to my blue LEDs goes to my white LEDs goes down to my resistor and then through my red LEDs and then it all returns to the negative side of the battery so if you can follow that you can pretty much build this uh, with no problem okay so here it is all wired up uh, this was actually pretty difficult for me uh, my soldering job isn't the best in the world, but oh well, I think it gets the job done. I think they'll stay. Yeah, I probably should have designed like a route for the wires to go, or a way to hide the wires, but nevertheless, you won't see it unless you look behind it. But that's it right there! Dun 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 dun! Okay, so here's the inside, the working part of all the LEDs. Uh, I have two AA batteries running all the lights, uh, along with some resistors step down the voltage for my red LEDs, because they're a little different. What I had to do to get the LEDs to make the light disperse a little bit better than just having the LEDs glued on the back, I printed off these little LED caps where the LED goes inside the cap and then I hot glued them onto the top side of the boxes uh, however I didn't have enough room for the white because I had a plan I had the plan to do the white here on the back but since the battery and the switch took so much room up I didn't have room for it so I just kinda did away with that um, but it looks good regardless and there are a few screws in order to do this um, quite a few screws and this plate my printer didn't have the best printing time in the world uh, so my fit tolerance were not very good on this build but everything kind of fit together I did have to do some finagling I took a uh, blow dryer and heated this plate up uh, quite a bit so that I can actually move it around a little bit relax the material enough so that it, everything snaps into place and goes where it needs to go um, the battery was the battery pack was a little bit taller than expected so just know that if you do do this build that you are gonna have an issue with that the fit fitting of everything together and once you get things in the right place you can go ahead and start screwing it together but um so I did not model a hole for the for the switch just because I got this push button switch in Japan so I'm sure you won't be able to get the right 
the right one in the states or wherever you may be. Um, what I did to make this hole was I took my soldering iron and when it was nice and hot I just kind of melted a hole where I wanted it and made the hole a little bit smaller than the diameter of the switch that needed to be and just kind of pushed the switch through um, and everything kind of form fit to the switch so it was a nice fit. Uh, it was really easy, no issues there. The total print time was two hours for the star and an hour for each individual colored piece along with an hour for the bottom piece. That's including LED light diffuser, we'll call it, that gets glued on the bottom side. So um, two light diffusers for each colored area, the red and the blue. And if you can find a smaller battery pack, then you can do the back side but I couldn't find one so uh, that's it uh, the star it prints with LED um, inserts in it so you don't have to worry about it too much some of uh, some of the LED diffusers didn't print as well as I wanted to so I just took my soldering iron and uh, warmed it up a little bit and pushed the LED in just like the just like the switch um, and it holds the LED in there pretty nice I didn't use any glue on the bottom side just in case I needed to replace them so you can pull out the LEDs and insert a new one without having to go through the whole hot glue process and gluing it down uh, but that's pretty much the end of the project well there it is this was a pretty fun project to do it took me roughly I don't know about a 12 hour build uh, if you take in count for all the print time and everything. Uh, it took me about two hours to get all the soldering done and assembled and everything. It was it was a lot of fun to do. Yeah, not too shabby. It didn't do a model video this time just because, man, I had a hard time modeling that star. It was a pain. It took me several, several tries. And I also grabbed the wrong geometry when I went to model the base and so everything is this one just came out way too big but I don't know what I'm gonna do with it maybe I'll put some LEDs on it and hang it on the wall or something like that uh, I think it's pretty cool I don't know if you have an idea of what I should do with this leave it in the comments down below hey thanks for watching my video be sure to subscribe to my channel I make a video every week except for last week I went on vacation enjoyed it. So if you have any questions about this build or where to get things, leave your questions or your comments down in the comment section below this video. And if you want to see more, click on the video up here. Looks so good!